to another version of Monday Mojo. This week's quote, it's not my fault for being a victim, it's my fault for staying a victim. That comes from Oprah. See, I'll never forget walking through the kitchen one day while Oprah's show was on and hearing her talk about the child abuse that she'd suffered. I mean, it was really incredible to think that somebody could rise above such a tragedy and go on to become such a massive success. Yet it's not so hard to comprehend when you consider the winner's attitude that she'd forged over the years. She's come to the realization that only she could perpetuate her own negative circumstances. That if she allowed the negative effects of the past to dictate her future, then perhaps she'd still be stuck there. Instead, she's made her way along a new path all the while carrying the past in her back. And like Holocaust survivor Viktor Frankl, Oprah found some meaning in the struggle. And if you know anything about her show, you're very aware that she has a passion for helping other people overcome. She's taken her burden and transformed it into a platform from which she helps others bundle up their baggage and move on. Well, I'll give even more credit to my mother, who for many years has told me that no matter what roadblocks we have faced, we need to learn how to kick the bucket. In other words, get over it and keep moving on. She speaks from experience because she suffered through a rugged childhood in a government housing project and the ups and downs of an alcoholic father. My mother would tell me stories about how she would get all dressed up and escape the project. She fought to gain acceptance to get on trips that would take her far away from the city so that she could gain a new perspective and find a peaceful spot. These are the same techniques I'm sure that we all use at some time in our lives to get over the hump. But I'm different, you're thinking. I just can't seem to get beyond my challenge point. I think about it day and night, it consumes me. Well, why not try to win the simple battles? Why not find the strength to find that moment of peace, to draw on when the storm rages? I watched an incredible episode of a guy who had endeavored to ride around the world on a motorcycle and meet different people from a variety of cultures and write about them. Well, at one point he finds himself in the hills of Medellin, Colombia, where he's kidnapped by leftist guerrillas and marched eight hours into the woods. Tortured and held for ransom, he concocts a story that he's suffering from prostate cancer so he might seem useless to his captors. Well, during his captivity, there's a moment when he's allowed to bathe in a cool stream, and as he recalls it, you'd think the guy was describing paradise, a little oasis in the middle of a crisis, a fantastic moment in display that regardless of the circumstances, we can choose to transcend them even if just for a few minutes. However, the best part of the whole story is not even the fact that he's eventually released to the care of the Red Cross, rather. It's his attitude once rescued. Although he's completely emaciated and beaten down, he describes how at that point he must continue on the journey, otherwise the rebels would have a true victory. Well, quickly you realize that this guy's not talking about the guerrillas at all. This man was looking straight in the face of any hurdle. Now, I don't want you to think that this guy was some type of modern-day superhero, because he wasn't. Neither was he some lunatic obsessed with a mission. I mean, I thought he was spot on. What happens when we do let our negative circumstances dictate our outcome? What if we did turn tail and run home to the comfort of what really he knew? What if he never traveled the world and touched the lives with his story of perseverance? Who would he have become? You can just imagine him curled up in a ball in his bed, crying himself to sleep, popping sleeping pills just to escape the pain. But he chose differently. However, he still bleeds just like us. He still cries as he recalls the ordeal, especially as a gun is fired right over his head while he stares into an empty grave. Yet again, the simple wisdom is that he chose to kick the bucket. So why is it so difficult for us to do the same? Why do we find it so difficult to channel our anger into positive endeavors? Well. If I were a psychological scientist, I would work day and night on the formula for the conversion of anger into inspirational dissatisfaction, and I'd give out free doses every day. You could line up to get a sip of the converter that would help you stop pointing your finger. You'd stop blaming the world, your friends, your family for what's gone wrong in your life. It would then give you great clarity to see yourself for what you really are, not what other people want you to be, but what you're truly capable of with no boundaries where you go headlong into challenge instead of turning back. And I'll leave you with the story of a little guy learning how to skate. Well, as I skated behind him, I could see his hesitancy. His body position told me that he was preparing for a crash and burn. He was wobbly and shaky as he contemplated what could go wrong next. You see, I could see myself in his eyes because he's my boy. 
At his age, I never clearly knew that I should take the agony of falling down and channel it into my desire to achieve. So I encouraged him to get mad and pick up his feet and make it happen. And he did. He was better in an instant, and even though his new wipeouts at this new speed were even bigger, he knew he could never be the same. Later that day, he told me that even on Saturdays, dudes could learn. It gave me pause and made me see the circle of life as that little girl fought her way out of the projects and taught another little guy to overcome. So even though it hurts and you're sometimes afraid, kick the bucket and overcome. Hey everybody, another version of Monday Mojo from freethinkingtools.com reminding you to think and thrive. And please feel free to share this with any of your friends and family. Pass it around and embed it on your blogs. We'll see you next time here on freethinkingtools.com. I'm Danny Griffin.